Welcome back, all you hardcore wrestling fans. Aaron Royal here once again for another week of IPW Weekly Recap right here on UPN 44. Fans, we've got three big ma- What? No, they don't want to hear about all- All right, fans, the cameraman is telling me I need to update you on my condition. Uh, the people that run the WrestlePlex have asked that I tell you all what's going on on camera because they've been flooded with calls wondering about my condition. Uh, as you can see, the condition has gotten somewhat worse. Uh, as Ron Nimi tried to attack me again last week, and I had to do a double somersault just to get out of his way. Thankfully, my cat-like reflexes came into play. Uh, fans, I always appreciate your email and your letters of support, all the visits I had in the hospital, as well as all the contributions to my relief fund. But fans, I have to tell you, this week I was in traction all week. I wasn't able to answer many of your emails like I had been in the past. Uh, you don't even want to know about the bed sores in the back of my leg, but that, that's a discussion for another time. Fans, let's just go right to the action here. We've got three big matches coming up today. Two of them later on will feature IPW competitors versus NWA wild side competitors. That's going to be some great action. But coming up first, it's two of IPW's own big man. It's Axis versus Rasta Man coming at you right now. Go fans, as I just told you, two of the big men here in IPW, it's Axis versus Rasta Man. And Ron, this should be an extremely brutal confrontation between these two big men. This should be brutal, but you know, Aaron, I hated to break you the bad news that no, that was not the lead singer of Right Said Fred. I knew how much you had your heart set on seeing that individual. Well, I was a little bit disappointed, but I have got to see him seven times already at various fan fests around the nation. So I'll take a Axis versus Rasta Man, excuse me, right here on IPW Weekly Recap. Not many people know this, but Axis was trained at the WrestlePlex by one Rasta Man, and lately these two haven't been seeing eye to eye. Rasta Man is extremely popular here in IPW. Axis used to be a big fan favorite here, but he's not going to win any more fans by going up against someone as popular as Rasta Man. Now, Axis was obviously listening to all the vicious rumors circulating throughout the dressing room and throughout the wrestling business. That's all Rasta Man can do is brawl. That's all he can do is come out and fight, punch, and kick. Not true. Rasta Man, one of the most technically gifted wrestlers in all of IPW hardcore wrestling and one of the most experienced worldwide on many tours through Germany, Puerto Rico, and Japan. Yes, Ron, that's very true. We've mentioned that several times here in IPW Weekly Recap. Many of our superstars here in IPW are known all around the world, and Rasta Man is one of the biggest stars we have here in IPW as far as an international level is concerned. And, Ron, what you said, people say that this man can only brawl. Everyone who watches IPW knows that's not true. I hate to admit it because it's your guy, Mike Sullivan, but I've seen some great, great confrontations between these two. Sometimes Rasta Man, then known as Navy SEAL, would almost turn into a high flyer, as would marvelous Mike Sullivan. These two just seem to bring out the best in each other. Uh, right now, they seem to be on friendly terms, but you never know how long that'll last here in IPW with these two individuals. Axis levels Rasta Man with a big boot to the face, follows right up with a nice snap suplex. I gotta admit it, Axis has come a long way since he comes strolling into the the Florida WrestlePlex over a year ago. He's bigger, he's stronger, he's meaner. The guy's pissed off constantly. Don't even ask me what, I don't know what his problem is. But truthfully, he is one of the guys that is the future of the independent scene. He can only get better in the ring with guys like Rasta Man. And basically, he's taking it right to the big man. Yes, he is. Rasta Man, not often on the, oh, nice chop right across the back of head of Axis. And you don't turn your back on a veteran. You don't turn your back on anybody, but much less a veteran like Rasta Man here in IPW, and Axis is learning that right now as we speak. It seems like the learning is not over for this student here in the IPW ring. Rasta Man is the type of guy that likes to party. He likes to come out and talk about the ganja. What's he doing there, Ron? What is that? That is because... I don't know, what what is that? That's not a lucha spot. It might be a variation of the abdominal stretch with the leg going over the head to stretch even further. Yes, which I believe he calls nice Rasta goodness, if I'm not mistaken. And he misses with a clothesline there, that's Axis. Uh, and Axis was very excited before this match because he got to debut his new outfit that he got from Demolition Axe. A gift given to him by a ring veteran, handed down to him on a tour of Lutz in Newport Ritchie where they wrestled on the flea market scene. But look at the big man, Rasta Man, has to get his balance and comes off with a corkscrew missing gimmick. A corkscrew missing gimmick as called there by Ron Nimi. Now you see both big men down. Rasta Man holding his back in pain there as he was way, way up in the air on that maneuver and came down very hard. It seems like uh, maybe uh, Rasta Man needs some 
chiropractic services, but if you need anybody help with anything, temporary services of any nature, you can call Able Body Temp Services. That's 727 something 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 <laughs> 1111. <laughs> The number's not here in front of me, Ron. Do you know it? <laughs> of course I do. You're the worst shameless plug guy in the business. That's Able Body Temporaries at 727-771-1111. You're terrible, Aaron. Well, I try, Ron Nini. I'm not here to do plugs. I'm here to talk about IPW wrestling. You seem to think that there's all sorts of things I'm here for, like being your punching bag, which just aren't true. And I'm here trying to do my job, but you make it very hard sometimes with this thing you put in front of me, trying to do plugs. I'm just trying to call wrestling, brother. Now, if you go to ProWrestlingDaily.com, you can get some pictures of Aaron Royal getting slapped across the face by the hardcore giant. And if you don't sit here and quit getting mouthy with the man of the hour, Ron Nimi. I'm going to slap you again. I'm going to take you in Rasa style, reverse it, whip you in, and you're not going to come at me with a double axe handle like Axis just did. No one, I would dare to say you wouldn't drop me on my back like that either if I was able to be in a standing shoot fight position, but you always get me when my back is turned at the announce table, Ron Nimi. See, this is what the problem is with people like you, Aaron Royal. You're never given the respect where it's due. You got Rasta men and access, trading punches, going blow for blow. Gentleman Jim Bragg has already blown up and got a whole night of action to call, and you're sitting here babbling about yourself. Look at access, another big boot to the face. Oh, Ron, I learned about babbling from myself, about myself from the best at Sir Ronald J. Nimi IV. And here you see this is a big rock bottom-like maneuver there by Rasta Man putting down the big man Axis. I don't think that's going to finish him off, and I guess Rasta doesn't think so either as he appears to go up to the second rope. There is a reason why Rasta Man is a former IPW heavyweight champion. Two-time. Two-time, two-time IPW heavyweight champion. Oh, because of moves like that. Right there, and this should finish off the big man, I do believe. One, two, three. And that is a three count by referee gentleman Jim Bragg raising the hand of Rasta Man. Fans, that's a big, big win there for Rasta Man. You hear the fans cheering him on, and he's thanking all the fans right here. And look at that. The Cuban assassin, Fidel Sierra, comes in the ring with that flag, beating down Rasta Man. These two have a history that goes back over a decade, not only here in IPW, but all over the state of Florida, all around the world, over in Puerto Rico. Fans, we haven't seen the end of this feud, but we'll be back in just a moment here on IPW. And this is the IPW Event Center. IPW returns to the Florida WrestleFlex Saturday night, November 24th for the November to dismember 2001. Already signed, Scoot Andrews versus AJ Styles for the IPW Heavyweight title. The Shane Brothers versus Quickie Mart inside a steel cage. And the Madman Jet Jaguar teams with the insane Von Tanker as they battle Chaos and David Young. Then IPW invades the outpost for the very first time on December the 1st. And December the 8th, IPW returns to the Florida WrestleFlex. As always, for the very latest on all these events, be sure to check out IPW-Hardcore.com. Hey, this is Cal Edmund from the Steel Cage on Sports Radio 1010 The Team. And you're watching IPW Hardcore Wrestling on UPN 44. Yeah. All right, fans, this is the first of two big IPW versus NWA Wildside matches. Right here, you have IPW's Naftali going up against NWA Wildside's Jimmy Rave, the former NWA Wildside Junior Heavyweight Champion, and he was able to get a victory over Albino in Ybor City a few weeks ago. We'll see if tonight Naftali can get his revenge and defend the honor of IPW. Hey, get his name right. Is it Albino or is it Naftali? I, I don't know. The guy switches his gimmicks about as often as you exactly. change your underwear. He also calls himself Mr. UPN. I'm not sure exactly what that's referring to, but he was calling himself that the other night right here at the WrestlePlex. And speaking of the WrestlePlex fans, tomorrow night, that's Saturday night, the 17th of November at 7 p.m., the Florida WrestlePlex will host a Christian Wrestling Federation show. You can call for ticket information at 727-526-6778. Call today, not only for all your IPW and CWF tickets, but call to start your training today right at the, there at the Florida WrestlePlex. And Naftali, you can see a little bit of fire in this kid's eye. He's always the type of guy that comes in, takes his matches, his feuds, and everything else very seriously. He seems to be taking it to the next level with this deal with Jimmy Rave and NWA Wildside. It's gotten personal. He's taken his pride, he's taken the name of IPW, and he's basically taken a leg drop and missed by about half a mile. 
Yes, he did, Ron. As you were talking there, both guys tried to do a little chicanery and trickery, trickery with each other. They got that on the amateur wrestling position, but both men moved out of the way. And here the ladder comes into play. This was a ladder match uh, for the Anarchy Rules referee shirt. And right here, it was going to be for Jimmy Rave's NWA Wildside Junior title, but he lost it before he was able to come down here and defend it against Naftali. Naftali said, one way or the other, I'm getting the ladder involved in this match. And there you see why, as he's the king of the gimmick and weaponry matches, especially the ladder. And there he goes, oh, but he misses with a big dive. He hits himself right on the ladder and the middle turnbuckle, and Jimmy Ray should take advantage right now. Now, lucky for Naftali, he has the best insurance in Tampa. Best insurance. That's right. There, I gave you your line this week. Are you happy? Absolutely. Okay, fans, and just like myself and Ron Nemi, after each and every CWF and IPW show, come with us, all the announcers, referees, all the wrestlers, come to Extra Innings, and Ron, tell them where that's located, right here in St. Pete. Located at 1850 Central Avenue, right in St. Pete. All you have to do is follow the savory scent of the chicken's fingers that I eat with the oh-so-sweet sauce and the buttery covering. Uh, uh, Ron, Ron, there's a match oh, going sorry. in the ring. We, we know you like your food there at Extra Innings, but we'll put them over a little bit more later. Right now, Jimmy Rave is climbing to the top of the ladder, and it doesn't look like a very secure ladder there. And Naftali trying to take advantage. Wow. Oh, but he gets leg drop right across the back of the neck, and that backfired on our own Naftali pretty badly right there, Ron. This reminds me of the brutal feud in the old Mid-South Territory between Norvell Austin and Coco Ware. You look at Naftali. Who became the pretty young things, if I'm not good, mistaken. Very good point. Not that anybody actually cares, but I'm just bringing up useless references here to fill time because I can't think of anything else to say. Well, what we could talk about, Ron, if you were thinking, is the big IPW show that will also be held. Oh, oh. Well, I'll talk about that in a minute. That was a double McGroin buster right there with the ladder, uh, perpetrated by Naftali, but he hurt himself as well as Jimmy Ray, but he does a drop toehold, rams his face right into the ladder, and hopefully Naftali can take back over here. And fans, as I was saying, you can catch Naftali the 24th of November right here at the Florida WrestlePlex. He'll be in the big 20-man cruiserweight battle royal, and the winner of that match will be the new number one contender for the Florida Unified Cruiserweight title held by none other than Jet Jaguar. It is a 20-man cruiserweight battle not battle royal, but basically in a Royal Rumble style match. Two men oh. will start the match and every minute thereafter, another wrestler enters the ring. For 20 competitors, you are eliminated either by pinfall, submission, or DQ. This is not some ridiculous battle royal. We're not gonna bring oh. in. Sorry about that, Ron, but Naftali is just getting brutalized. That's gonna be a big challenge for him during that Royal Rumble like Battle Royal, but right now he just keeps getting smacked right in the face by that ladder, and his face may even be in worse shape than mine this week here on IPW Weekly Recap. Don't get carried away. At least he's not going to come in here trying to sell that his face has been fractured in about 50 spots like yours have from one slap. You know something, Aaron? I actually get the feeling that you're mocking the power of the hardcore giant. I give you one slap across the face, and you show up looking like your face has been hit by a Mack truck. Well, firstly, Ron, I don't know when I've ever mocked or made fun of you or anything like that on the air. But there you see Jimmy Rave with the referee shirt in this Anarchy Rules match. Whoever puts the referee shirt on acts as the referee, fans. And there you see Jimmy Rave trying to get it on. Uh, fans, you can hear about those sorts of rules and much, much more each and every week on Pro Wrestling Weekly. That's Shannon Rose's radio show. And yes, sometimes I even come in there to co-host and save the day. It's every Wednesday from 7 to 8 p.m. on 1040 a.m. Be able, sure to check that out along with ProWrestlingDaily.com. That's all one word, ProWrestlingDaily.com. Naftali's got this weird fixation with this anarchy rules match. Does it maybe have something to do that he is the president of the Bronco Lubitsch fan club? Uh... Actually, he's the treasurer now. He wasn't able to keep the presidency uh, what, with his wrestling oh. schedule. And there you see that's he, his triple, ju uh, his triple jump moonsault. Uh, welcome to Binoville Maneuver, which is essentially the same as the Van Terminator. And here you see Naftali getting the referee shirt on. One, two, three. Very quick three count by Naftali. Very smartly played there, but it doesn't matter. The winner here this week by pinfall in this Anarchy Rules ladder match for IPW over NWA Wildside is Naftali, Ron. Now you see Naftali gently put that referee's blouse over, and I take away the comment what I said about Bronco Lubitsch. Bronco Lubitsch couldn't have had a three count that fast if it was Iceman King Parsons and Kevin Von Erich tearing up that cotton ball. All right, Ron, I hate to interrupt you, but we've got to go to break. We'll be right back here with IPW Weekly Recap in just a minute. IPW Hardcore Recap is brought to you by... This is NWA Wildside Feud. 
And fans, I have to admit I'm a little timid here, but I have to bring him in for the show. He's Sir Ronald J. Nemi the Fourth. Hey, Aaron, how you doing, brother? Good. What the hell are you doing? Not again, please. Look, look at my condition. Hey, Aaron, don't be afraid to book your own injury angle. Don't you think you're playing it up just a, just a little bit? It's been like four weeks, one slap in the face, and you're out here playing up a broken neck, a broken it's nose. Not broken, it's not broken. Unbelievable. Ron Nemi, the hardcore giant, if I wanted to injure Aaron Roy, you one thing you better not do this week, you better not ever cut me off All again. All right, Ron, I, I won't ever cut you off again, but fans, we have to go right to the match. What? What are you doing? All right, sorry I had to interrupt you uh, and go to this match there, Ron, but the producers were telling me it's time for this big, big independent superstars dream match between IPW's marvelous Mike Sullivan, a member of your own 911 Incorporated, and he's going up against, from NWA Wildside, AJ Styles. Ecstasy. Oh, and ecstasy's at ringside. I can't believe I didn't notice that. Excuse me while I mark out for her, Ron. You go ahead and take over the she match. She got the most beautiful, big eyes that I have ever seen. Oh, I thought you were going to talk about Iraq, but that's seven. That's what I was saying. I just didn't want to come straight out and say it. All right, well, Ron, let's let's try not to be quite so gimmicky this match, because this is a big, big match in the IPW versus Wildside feud. Not to mention, this can main event many independent shows all around the country. Not to sound like a wrestling cliche, but it definitely could. Here you see some sportsmanship by these two guys. Very unusual in the IPW versus Wildside feud, but that's how much these guys know and respect the talent and the ability of the individual that they're in the ring with right now. The sportsmanship and the handshaking is totally uncalled for, and I don't like it. AJ Styles, I'll give the guy credit. He's come into this feud with guns blazing. Right here he's in the ring with 911 Incorporated Zone, Mike Sullivan. And on the 24th of November at the Florida WrestlePlex, he will challenge for the IPW heavyweight title held by one Scoot Andrews. Yes, he's challenged for that title before and was beaten by Scoot Andrews. And fans, whatever the outcome of this match, AJ Styles will wrestle for that title in another big IPW versus Wildside feud match on the 24th of November right here at the Florida WrestlePlex. Call 727-526-6778 to get your tickets. Not only that, fans, but remember, tonight, Saturday the 17th, right here at the WrestlePlex, there will be a Christian Wrestling Federation show. Bell time is 7 p.m. Be sure to come to both big events here at the WrestlePlex. The Florida WrestlePlex houses is some of the best wrestling action in the entire country and also trains the best talent to come out of Florida in many, many years. You see Mike oh, Sullivan. Oh, look see, at that. That's why what? you don't do the handshakes, exactly. Ron Nemi. That's what you were talking exactly. about. Exactly. AJ Styles is always thinking. He's the type of guy that'll reel you in with that handshake, and then he'll punch you one right in the mush for your troubles, and he knows better. Look, wow, maybe he doesn't know better. Who's going to start Look at trading them trading chops. chops with Mike Sullivan. Oh. That's not very smart. No. You might as well be trading chops with Ric Flair or Chris Benoit when you start trading chops there with Mike Sullivan. I tell you, many people have been chopped by Mike Sullivan. Come back in the dressing room area bleeding from their chest area and their AJ Styles just got his head about taken off as he falls under the entranceway here in the WrestlePlex and AJ Styles is hurting just like all of Wildside is going to be hurting by the end of this feud with IPW. Everybody when they come to IPW Hardcore Wrestling in the Florida WrestlePlex, they turn it way up. They start laying the punches, the kicks, the chops. They're throwing each other all over the building. And Cowhead, who's on 10, 10 a.m., hosts a steel cage every Saturday from 11 a.m. till noon. He comes to the Florida WrestlePlex with Ashchin and Putz and all the other lackeys that help him host that show. They come to the WrestlePlex because of talent like Mike Sullivan, because of the hardcore giant, and unfortunately, because of NWA Wildside talent like AJ Styles. What do you call that, Ern? Uh, that was some sort of uh, inverted neck breaker maneuver. You see Mike Sullivan in a lot of pain there from that. Mike Sullivan, one of the top, top wrestlers here in IPW, has only lost a handful of matches here in the last two years, but he's having himself a little bit of trouble here with AJ Styles. Not that I don't think he can come back from it, but there's no shame in being on the short end of the stick for a little while in a match against AJ Styles. I don't want to take anything away from this match, but I got to get in this. Drop kick. I got to get in this one other shameless plug. IPW Hardcore Wrestling will be at the Outpost on Saturday, December 1st, directly across the street from the Ice Palace. We're going to be hosting a free show right after the huge U2 concert that night, so you can go there. There's going to be over 15,000 people packed in the Ice Palace, and I guarantee you come to that IPW Hardcore Wrestling show late on Saturday night, December 1st. There's going to be at least 10,000 people. Going in. Free event, right, Ron? Free. 
All right, fans, that's your chance to check out the best talent in the state of Florida for free right there at the Outpost on December the 1st after the U2 concert. Be sure to be there. And Mike Sullivan looks like he's trying to get some sort of a Boston Crab type maneuver in AJ Styles, but he's fighting it off and looking into a nice roll up there. Gets only a two count, but that could have easily been the end for Mike Sullivan. I'm very glad he was able to kick out. Where do these guys come up with all of these maneuvers? They got a counter for every counter and then a counter for that. He hits a big spin kick right to the face of Mike Sullivan when it looked like he was going to be dropped for the finish himself. AJ Styles and that crooked wild side referee in the ring, they got their act together. I'll give them credit. AJ Styles is everything that he was billed for. He lived up to everything that I have read on the internet, everything I've heard about this guy. AJ Styles is a talent, but he's no Mike Sullivan. That's true, Mike Sullivan, as I've said before, a top, top competitor here. He's beaten Scoot Andrews, he's beaten Rasta Man, he's beaten every top contender that has been put in front of him here in the rings in Florida. He's wrestled for the WWF, he's wrestled up in Madison Square Garden, so the pressure of wrestling a guy like AJ, AJ Styles is not going to get to marvelous Mike Sullivan, but that elbow right across his mouth just might. On November 24th at the WrestlePlex, Mike Sullivan is going to take on the returning superstar from Japan, the independent rookie, the rookie of the year in IPW, Seiji Naki, coming back after over six months of having a broken ankle, suffered at the hands of Mike Sullivan. Who is he going to get in the ring with that night on his return match with the man himself, seconded by the hardcore giant Ron Nimi? Oh, you're going to go to the ring with him for a once. Absolutely. If I could stop getting my clot cleaned by first NWA Florida and then NWA Wildside, I would be at ringside with Mike Sullivan. Well, you seem to have time for the Shane brothers. You don't have time for Mike Sullivan. What's going on with that? Uh, anyway, back to the match. And here you see AJ Styles. I don't know what maneuver he's going to do here, but it's going to be crazy. I can. Oh, wow. A sunset flip power bomb deal off the top rope. That's got to be it for Mike Sullivan. That was a deal, not a gimmick. It was actually a sunset flip into a power bomb deal. Correct. All right, fans. And I want to mention one more match from that big November to dismember card, November the 24th. Devin gets one more shot at the IPW TV title, this time with a new champion, Snow. Those two big men are going to tear each other apart on the 24th of November right here at the Florida WrestlePlex. I don't know what Devin's done to deserve this title shot, but I'm going to go on the line right now. I've challenged Peter Gabriel before. I've come out and I put it on the line. I said, Peter Cetera from Chicago, you want some of me? I'm going to put it on the line right now. Bono. Edge or any of the other two guys that nobody knows the name of in U2. You want a piece of the hardcore giant Ron Nimi? You come to the outpost right after your show and I'll kill all of you. Single handedly, one at a time, I'll destroy you. Yeah, you weren't saying that when Richie Sambora was beating your ass a few months ago when Bon Jovi was in town. But right now, we've got to get back to this match. And what does he do? Oh, a nice powerbomb maneuver. AJ Styles going for the Hurricane Rana, but it's reversed by Mike Sullivan. The IPW man is taking back over this match, and I'm very, very glad for that, Ron Nimi, even if he has a part of 911 Incorporated. Mike Sullivan's going to do what's right. That's why he's a former IPW tag team, hardcore, and heavyweight champion. He unified the hardcore and heavyweight titles for a while, but there AJ Styles gets his knees up right into the gut of Mike Sullivan, the very well-shaped gut, as Ecstasy has told me on several occasions, but he gets hit there nonetheless, and both men rolling around on the ring. It's going to be whoever gets up first is going to have a big advantage to try to win this match. You're right. Mike Sullivan did unify the IPW heavyweight and hardcore titles. I believe he beat God Gonorrhea or syphilis or whatever that lackey's name was that used to work here. He unified the titles, but the truth is IPW Hardcore Wrestling is once again recognizing the hardcore title. Mike Sullivan's there not with chasing slingshot that. Slingshot suplex, wow. fa face buster maneuver there by Mike Sullivan. If he could get up right now, he could get the pinfall in this match. AJ Styles, just roll over and take the pin. Do what's good for you. Count the, come on, referee. Oh, he barely gets that shoulder up. If that referee had been counting to three the way our own Star Stevens can, despite the boating accident, this match would have been over. Star Stevens might be the mud baby. He might be somebody that I personally don't care for. But when I talked to Star Stevens after the match, I came up to him and I said, Star, did you see that slow count? What do you think of that, brother? And he said to me, right directly in the eyes, I don't trust them wild side boys one bit, Ronnie. Oh, and he get, drops Mike Sullivan right in his face, and it's important to point out, Star Stevens used to referee up in NWA Wildside, but he's made it known that his loyalty lies right here with IPW, and he's shown that to be true in the past, as I'm sure he will in the future. But, Ron, right now, I wonder if either of these guys are going to get up from the beating that they've been giving each other. You don't see the whole match here, fans. Upwards of 30 minutes this match has been going on right now. Hopefully Mike Sullivan can kick out. Oh, once again, just barely gets his shoulder up. I've got to give to that NWA Wildside referee. He didn't really count any faster 
Parker for that pin attempt. It may not have been as fast as he should have, but at least he was even right there. He called, I'll, I'll give him credit. He did call it down the middle, and he brought a beautiful pasta dish to the anniversary show the following night. Oh, yes, he did with that chicken marsalis. It was very good. Oh, very, very spicy. Oh, three count by Mike Sullivan right there. IPW 2-0 and this week versus NWA Wildside. Ron, you have any comments or anything you want to say before we uh, throw it back to the closing? NWA Wildside, this is just the beginning of this feud. Natali, Mike Sullivan, the hardcore giant, Ron Nemi, and the rest of IPW are coming at you. All right, Ron, sorry to cut you off, but we've got to go to the closing. Fans, we'll see you right here next week. All right, you're sure he's gone, right? He's not coming back? All right, let's get this done just in case before he does. Fans, we have to congratulate Mike Sullivan. Whether you like him or not, it's a big, big victory for IPW right here in our feud with NWA Wildside. And I can assure you, fans, that feud is far, far from over. Bill Barons, you bit off more than you can chew. I may not like Ron Nemi. He may attack me for no apparent reason whatsoever each and every week right here in IPW Weekly Recap on UPN 44. But Bill Barons, he's a lot better promoter than you. And he's going to come. If he can do this to me, imagine what Ron Nemi could do to someone. Somebody like you.